one of the most brutal executions in English history, saw Mary Queen of Scots enter the Great Hall of Fotheringhay Castle for her date with the executioner. She had been a fawn in the side of Queen Elizabeth I, and the Scottish former Queen had been involved in a plot to overthrow Elizabeth and become the Queen herself. But she spent roughly two decades a prisoner of the English Queen, and she was desperate. However, on the 8th of February 1587, the executioner, a man named Bull, was stood on the scaffold awaiting his royal victim. With the swing of the axe, the English Queen had ordered the execution of another anointed Queen. But Mary Queen of Scots lives on today in the curiosity of people all around the world, because of her downfall. But after her execution, a death mask was cast of her face, and it shows the haunting dead Queen of Scotland. Join us today as we look at Mary Queen of Scots' death mask, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Mary's execution did not go well, and it was not a clean one. As she made her way to the scaffold, the executioner asked for his forgiveness, and Mary gave him this, and as her ladies left the scaffold, she reached for the block. The executioner and his assistant stood there with their axe in their hands, and then Mary lying on the block stretched out her arms, saying she was ready to die. The executioner's assistant held the top of her head, and the executioner readied his axe, but his first swing embedded in the back of her head did not land cleanly on the neck. This would have been very painful, but he then dislodged the axe and tried again, this time hitting the mark much more successfully. But Mary's head had not been taken off, and instead the executioner had to saw through the last parts of her neck to separate the head from the body. As the executioner held up the head and declared God save the Queen, Mary's head fell onto the floor and she was wearing a wig, and witnesses claimed her lips stirred for around 15 minutes after her head was taken off. But then everyone was ordered out of the hall, and anything that belonged to Mary, or was touched by her blood was then thrown into the fire of Fotheringhay Castle's great hall, to make sure it could not be venerated in the future as a relic. Her clothing was thrown into the fireplace, and the executioner's block was also burned, along with much of the scaffold. But for months Elizabeth I would go over in her mind the series of events of the execution, and she was greatly distressed and plagued by her decision to sign Mary's death warrant. But because of this, the remains of Mary were lying in a coffin inside of a presence chamber in Fotheringhay Castle collecting dust inside of a coffin. She would later be buried inside of Peterborough Cathedral, a place where she did not want to be buried, and in one final act of disgrace, Elizabeth had Mary's funeral performed in the new Protestant religion, something Mary was not a part of, being Catholic. But immediately following her execution, Mary was taken into a room of the castle, and she was then inside a secure lead coffin, waiting to be embalmed. It was standard practice at the time during the Tudor period for kings, queens and high-profile people to be embalmed following their death. The body of Mary was attended to by physicians and doctors who cut open her remains, and pulled out her insides, including her heart and intestines. This cavity was then stuffed with herbs and spices to stave off decay, and her insides were buried inside Fotheringhay Castle, presumably in a leaden casket. These have still yet to be found. But following the embalming process, a number of death masks were cast of Mary Quilla Scott's face. It's not known if her head was sewn back on her body following her execution, like Charles I's head was but following the embalming the plaster moulds and casts of Mary's face were made while she was at Fotheringhay, and throughout the centuries there are a number of death masks that have emerged and have been attributed to the former Queen of Scotland. The death masks show her face in a rather sombre state, they show her with a peaceful and calm look on her face, and they do not show shock, panic or pain with the ordeal she went through. Her eyes are kept closed and her lips are clasped tightly to make it seem as if she is asleep. One of the death masks is known as the Lennox Love Mask, and it belonged to the Duke of Hamilton, and it was kept at their home of Lennox Love for more than 250 years, being held in a casket along with a number of Mary's possessions, including a sapphire ring and the casket letters. The other death mask of Mary is known as the Jedburgh Mask, which was found in Peterborough, the same town, where she was buried to begin with before she was exhumed and moved to Westminster Abbey. Peterborough is also the closest cathedral city to Fotheringhay, the site of her execution. But this mask looks very different, and it's bigger and more painted, and has been decorated to show Mary wearing makeup during her execution, and on top of it is also a wig. 
It's displayed along with other memorabilia and artefacts relating to Mary, including a watch that belonged to her. But the original appearance of the Jedburgh mask would have been white and not painted. But the death masks of Mary Queen of Scots would have been cast in the hours straight after her execution, during the embalming process. The coffin would have been opened, and then this would have been done, but her remains continued to be left inside of the castle for some time, before the time came to bury her. It's believed that there are four death masks, and two of these have been allegedly lost to history, or they may be in the collections of some Scottish earls and noblemen. But they show the brutality that Mary met her death with, and her execution did not go well, and was botched. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.